praise the name of Jesus. God, I can't do it without you. I need your help. Speak, God, because we're listening. I don't want to take, lest I take credit for all of the work and the compilation of work that I put together. This is simply me putting together a whole facet of resources and presenting it in the most lucid and revelatory way according to what the word of God has spoken. But one of the greatest minds that has ever walked the face of the planet Earth is the late Dr. Miles Monroe. And so a lot of this teaching I actually got out of his teaching along with Perry Stone, who is a prophetic voice in this age. So many incredible authors that have studied to put this together, but this will probably be one of the most important messages that I preach all year. Because if you don't get this, you're going to wander through life aimlessly with no, no point, no purpose, no intentionality. And eventually you're going to lose time. You lose effectiveness. You lose power and merit. You lose value. Doesn't mean that you won't have a job. Doesn't mean that you won't function. It doesn't mean that you won't exist. Doesn't mean that you won't be. But will you be what God wants you to be? Will you have all that God desires for you to have? Will you do all that God has intended for you to do? And will your life make divine difference? I don't just want to make a difference in your life. I can make a difference in your life by opening the door for you. That's why you turn around sometimes if you ain't rude and say thank you. But I want to make a difference that changes not just your life, but changes your lifestyle, changes your mindset, changes your behavioral patterns, and ultimately changes your destiny and puts it back on course. I want to make that kind of a difference. I want to live to be missed, not just remembered. I'm preaching already if y'all ain't figured it out. The fleshly inclination is, of course, I, this whole month, let me say this, we've had some most, the most incredible, amazing, anointed, phenomenal preachers this side of heaven. They have blessed us all month long. And then y'all turned around and blew my socks off and sent me straight into the ugly cry last Sunday. I will never forgive you for it. Thank you so much for being so kind to me and my wife, my family. And the inclination of man's heart is, of course, to be impressive. To impress people. But I'm so glad that I'm in a different season. Thank you, Lord. Where I don't feel inclined to impress you, but I, I feel inclined to, to bless God. And to impress him with my faithfulness and obedience. So if you pray, then I'll preach. Are y'all with me? I know some of y'all are looking at me lost and confused. No child left behind. Slap your neighbor until the weave shake loose. And say, he's talking to you. Say, if you pray, then he'll preach. My God. <laughs> if you pray, then I'll preach. This is a heavy lifting. This is some heavy lifting for me. I've had to really pray and wrestle with this because the concepts sometimes are mind-blowing. The truth and the revelation has been awe-stricken to the extent that it's changed a whole lot about the way I practice, the way I preach, the way I move, the way I function. And the inclination of my heart, of course, would be to coming behind all of those great preachers would be to impress you and make sure y'all know I'm still the pastor and I can still preach. <laughs> By the time I might, I might have been in sweat out my clothes, ah! Move over, I'm walking on pews today. <laughs> but if you'll allow me not to have to engage the spirit of entertainment, I want to I change and transform your thinking, which will ultimately change everything in your life. Are y'all with me today? If they're in the hallway, let them in right quick. Come on, let them in. I'm about to read the word, but I, I know they're standing out there. I don't know how they are late. <clears throat> <clears throat> Clock went back, y'all. Clock went back. I had 10 o'clock members at 7.30 today. So y'all really on time for the 12.30 service. Amen. Glory to God. <laughs> Welcome. I'm so glad that you came. In Jesus' name. All around the globe, thank you again for worshiping with us. And those of you who should have been here, your clock went back and you still stayed at home to stream. God bless you too. Ecclesiastes, the third chapter and 11th verse. When you found it, say Amen two passages right quick one is in ecclesiastes the other was in the book of psalms the first one in ecclesiastes 3 and 11 i want to read it together come on we're going to read together we're working today we are working today i promise you this is going to work you it's going to work if nothing else it's going to work your nerves <laughs> read this with me it says he has made in his what in whose time in its time in its time, in its time, pay attention to that article. I want to make sure that you get that, that you grasp that. He, who is whom? God. He, God, has made 
everything beautiful in its what? In its time. In its time. It'll make more sense to you in a moment. Go to Psalm, the 24th number of Psalm, I believe. 27th number of Psalms. Some of y'all were at 730 service. Amen. 27th number of Psalm, 14th verse. The 27th number of Psalm, the 14th verse. Yes, this is good. And this is the new, new American Standard Bible or the English Standard Version. They read the same, but I want to read it from this version, so I want you to read along with me uh, on the overhead, if you would. Just say, wait for the Lord. Be, be what? Strong and let your heart take Take what? Yes. Wait. Let's read it through one more time. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart Yes. God preach in this place that the anointing of the Holy Spirit overtake my members that your servant I might become. I yield God that you might be glorified. That everything seen, said, and done be to your glory. I can't do it without you. Your manifested presence is in this place and where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty. So release me from anything, any hindrance, apprehension, any distraction, anything that would seek to hinder me from delivering the truth of what you have spoken. God, I call everything that the Holy Spirit has already invested into my study back to my remembrance. Let every story, let everything align with your truth and be glorified. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Thank you for the privilege of sitting next to the people that are not carbon copy, but they are originals. Let their purpose now and their destiny be tied to mine as you have prescribed in your holy word. And as they grow in truth, let me grow in knowledge and truth and wisdom and understanding as well. And on the other side of it, the conclusion of it, we're going to corporately give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated in the awesome, ridiculous presence of our God. He's so amazing. He's so amazing. He's so amazing. For a few moments, I just want to talk to you about the concept of time and seasons. Ecclesiastes 3 and 1, I didn't read it out loud, but it simply says, for everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. And so everything in life is predicated upon your ability and your capacity to understand, to navigate, and to move appropriately and adequately through certain times and seasons. In Ecclesiastes 3 and 11, we read it with me. It says, he has made everything beautiful in its what? Say it one more time. In its time. In its time. In its time. This is not necessarily a normal course of study, especially for a Sunday morning, because a lot of times we spend time as pastors encouraging you with the hope of the, of the word of God. Uh, but every now and then we have to shift gears, switch hats, and we have to come back with an instructive word of God. And we have to give you the word of instruction to make sure that you are equipped and that you're prepared to deal with whatever it is life is about to hand you or the devil tries to hit you with. Are y'all with me? Push your neighbor and say, no child left behind. Keep up. He's going somewhere. Anybody playing with the devil up in here today? We measure our short sojourn here on earth by time. Time is one of the most valuable, most important things that you can understand and that you possess in your, in your life. It's the only thing that when you spend it, you never get more of it. And there's, uh, there's an argument, theologically, there's an argument that says, well, God says he'll redeem the time. It simply means that God will accelerate your process. It doesn't mean that he's going to put more time back on your clock. If your teeth are gone, they're gone. <laughs> it's just that season. Don't worry about it. It comes with time. We measure our short sojourn here on earth by the time, and time is an interruption to eternity. Time is a brief moment in eternity with measurement. That's what time is. Literally, the, the, the entire existence of everything is encapsulated within this large, vast abyss of eternality. God, that's why God is, it exists in eternity because he's from everlasting to everlasting. Eternity has no beginning. It has no end. It simply is. Are you with me? And God created time and then everything that God, everything that has been created was created by the invisible God. Everything that has been created was created by God. Young people, let me help you out. I know they're going to tell you something different in science. But everything that was created was created by God, even especially and including time. 
Time was created by God. God created time and then put man inside or in time. Now, here's where the confusion comes in. Because God created the concept of time. He created the chronos. He created the chronological order. He created the chronometer. He created time, the very essence of our measurements. Everything that we measure, we measure in time. We celebrate birthdays annually because of time. We look at days and because they move forward in, a, in an incremental chron chronological order, we call that time. And that time becomes our measurement for everything that we do, for how we perceive things, for how we see things, and even for how we function. So it has become a common practice that everything in our lives is subject to the authority of time. That's what makes it very difficult for us to grasp and have a true understanding or relationship with God. Because God created everything. He even created time. He even put man in time. But he himself exists outside of time. And because he exists outside of time, the separation or the divide happens when we try to hold God who is outside of time accountable for doing things in time. Okay, y'all going to make this difficult for me. So we feel like because we prayed the prayer at 1030 that God heard us at 1030. God created the stuff that he doesn't live in. And that's what makes it so difficult for us to understand the existence of God and understand the reality of God's existence in our life and his participation in our circumstances. Because he created it, but he's not subject to it. He placed us in it, and we make our requests from that vantage or that perspective. But when he functions, he doesn't function subject to the authority of where we, where we exist in time. Are y'all with me? The Bible says that from everlasting to everlasting, he is what? God. And he is eternal. In, he is eternal. He is infinite. He is from everlasting to everlasting God. So he exists outside of time. We exist in time. Just because you prayed the prayer at 1030 a.m. Because God doesn't exist in the confines of time. He exists outside of time. Doesn't mean that he heard it at 1030 a.m. God sees things from an eternal perspective. We see things from a timed or in a timely perspective. Are y'all with me so far? Okay, let me make it more plain. Let me, let me help. Let me, no, no child left behind. I got you. Let me drop it down just a gear. Here we go. Watch this. You prayed it at 1030 a.m. And you think God heard you at 1030 a.m. So by 12 noon, you're saying, Lord, did you not hear what I said? God, did you hear me praying? Did you hear me struggling? Did you hear me last week, last month, last year? God says, I didn't hear you last week, last month, last year, but before you were formed in your mother's womb because I operate from the end times to the beginning time, I saw you before you ever realized you needed to call on me. God exists outside of time. He's so magnificent, so marvelous. He's so mind-blowing that he sees you coming out of the womb and the tomb and going in the tomb at the same time. That's how spectacular, that's how mind-blowing, that's how awesome, that's how incredible your God is. And so it is because we're subject to the authority of time because we live in time. We think that God moves in our time. But God moves in Kairos, which is above our chronos. He moves in an eternal timetable. And just because it didn't happen in the time, in the season, and in the way that you thought it should have happened, doesn't mean that God didn't hear you, that he doesn't see you, that he doesn't know exactly what you need. He's just waiting on the appointed time. That's when Kairos and Kronos, that's when God's time and our timing intersect one another. And then you'll see the manifestation of God's promises in your life. Slap your neighbor and say, wait on it. It's a season. It's a season. No, no, no. Y'all act like you're scared of your neighbor. You sit by somebody else. Say, it's a season. It's a season. It's going to happen. It's just going to happen in his season. Just because God didn't do it when you thought you prayed about it, you don't understand that before you even got here, before you were a twinkle in the eye of your mama or your daddy, God already knew what you would intersect that particular season of your life and he made provision in the heavenly so that things would be manifested in the earthly at the appointed time. And you better be glad that he doesn't do it prematurely because you would mess it up. 
You got to be careful how you deal with God because when, you, when he talks to you, he doesn't talk to you from the now, but he talks to you from the eternity. Talks to you from the beginning and the end at the same time. He makes known the end times even before the beginning. The Bible says it this way. He is both Alpha and Omega. He is the beginning of it and he's also seen the ending of it. We work from now to then. He works from then to now. He always sees the end from the beginning. Ecclesiastes 3 and 1 says it like, y'all still with me? Thank you, Jesus. I was nervous for y'all for a minute. Ecclesiastes 3 and 1 says this way. To everything there is a, no, put it up, put it up. Come on, please, put it up. There we go. Read this with me. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. Let's, Let's read it one more time. To everything there is a a time for every purpose under heaven. A time for every purpose under heaven. The question is presented. Why did God create time? To everything, there is a season. Watch this. A time for, for what is it for? Every purpose under heaven. I love what Pastor Cheryl Brady said last week. She says, every word is pregnant. You got to pay attention to every word in the text because if you skip a word, you'll miss the whole meaning. A time for every purpose. So why did he create time? Everything God created has a purpose. And every purpose of God's creation is attached to a time. So time was created so that we could fulfill God's purpose. And whenever there is something that God creates on the planet, he instantly attaches a time to it. So your purpose has a time. For everything, for everything there is a season. Watch this. A time. How many? A time. One time. A time. There's a certain allotted period for every purpose God has invested in your life. And that's what causes the alarm and the concern for me on your behalf. Because many of us don't realize that we have a time. That there is a time for the purpose that God created us. The biggest question, the greatest question known to mankind is what am I here for? Why did you create me? What is my purpose on earth? Why am I alive? Why am I still here? That's the great, what's one of the greatest questions that mankind has asked on a perpetual basis. And once you start discovering the purpose of God on your life, you got to recognize that that purpose is attached to a time. And that if you're not careful, you will waste the time which causes you to have unfulfilled purpose. Are y'all with me? Let me say it a different way. Time doesn't wait for you to discover your purpose. It continues to go whether you want it to, whether you don't. It will roll on. It will not stop. It is, it is, it is immutable. Um, it, is, it is unstoppable. And you cannot take time and put it on pause. It continues to go. So if you don't discover your purpose until you're 90, you've wasted a whole lot of time. Just because you're nine doesn't mean you can't find God's purpose for your life. So whether you're nine or whether you're 90, your purpose is attached to a time. The Bible says this, that man is but a few short days and appointed. There is an appointment for our transition from this life. You're appointed to die. And ultimately, it brings me to this conclusion. You don't have time to waste. I got a purpose, and that purpose is attached to a specific time. So what I really don't have is time for petty people. I don't have time for lying and gossipers. I don't, I don't have time for small talk. I don't have time for social media foolery. I don't have time to be on your tweet and your feed liking all your posts. I don't really have time for foolishness. There's something that God uniquely designed me to accomplish in the earth. And I don't have time to be worried about if you mad at me, if you like me, if you want to talk to me, if you said hello to me. God bless you. I'm on a mission. I got a purpose and God has given me a specific set time. I don't have time to waste. Slap your neighbor high five and say he is preaching to me now. That's why Ecclesiastes 12 and 1 says, Remember now thy creator in the days of your youth. 
Because when you get old and the years draw near, when you say, I have no pleasure in them, he says, remember in the days of your youth because he understands that you don't have but a few short days and you, can't, you cannot afford to keep putting off today what God has ordained and what he's purposed for your life to accomplish. you got to be able to step up to the plate and say, God, I, teach me to number my days aright that I might gain a heart of wisdom. In other words, teach me, God, why I'm here. Teach me the purpose of my days so that I can take advantage of the time that you've given me. I don't have time to waste. I don't mean no harm. I love y'all. Y'all my family, cousins and them. I love to see y'all. Glad to see you come. Glad to see you go. Because I really don't have time to waste. I don't have time for the foolishness. I don't have time for the fighting. I don't have time for frivolous conversations. I don't have time for things that are not about my purpose. If it's not helping me accomplish my purpose, I just don't have time. And I'm not trying to be mean, and I'm not even saying it figuratively, but literally because God says my purpose is attached to a time. I, I can't afford to give you that time because then I'll be unfulfilled purpose. <sighs> Okay, I'm working hard in myself. So, so watch this. Every time, watch this, a time is manifested in one way, in seasons. Time manifests itself seasonally. There is one year, but that year is in time and then manifested and measured by seasons. In most parts of the earth, they have four seasons. In Chicago, we have two. You got winter and construction. <laughs> Two seasons. But most places on the earth have winter, spring, summer, and fall. Those four cycles or those seasons are the manifestation of one concept, which is time. And when seasons change within time, you've got to learn how to discern the change so you can stay with your season. Are you with me? Everybody is born in time. It doesn't matter when you're born, where you're born. You're born in time. But you got to learn how to catch your season. When the winter comes, take off your holy jeans. Don't go and put on a swimsuit in the wintertime. When the winter season comes, you then have to adjust or adapt your behaviors so that you're able to accomplish and accommodate everything that's required in that season. Are y'all with me? Yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I, you know, I was confused. My, my, he's not in here, so I'm going to talk about him. But my baby boy came in this week, and I, and I just looked at him, and he said, why are you standing at me? I'm like, what, what is wrong with you? I, I know he's from the suburbs. I know he's hood. He's hood on the inside, but he, I did raise him out here in the suburbs. And, and so I'm, I'm looking at him, and this is the suburbanite coming out. I said, son, it's 40 degrees outside. Why you got no shorts? <laughs> but I just came outside like this. This is how I just came outside. I said, but, but son, you got on shorts with a hoodie on. I said, you look confused. If you're not able to catch and discern the season, guess what? You're going to look confused. Spiritually speaking, if you don't discern the season that God has you in, you're going to be misinformed, unprepared, and you're going to look confused. You don't wear your mink in the summertime. So if you don't know what season God has you in, you're going to look foolish. And you will not know what to do. When seasons change, you got to learn how to adjust. Every season is supposed to fulfill a specific purpose in time. And God doesn't measure your purpose or he doesn't measure your time or your life by your chronological order or your chronological age. What God is looking for is that purpose being fulfilled. You can't fulfill that purpose if you don't know what season you're in. Nothing worse than seeing somebody who's in a different season, but they're still living in the last one. Don't, we got company today. Don't y'all make me. Just say amen if you don't. Okay, y'all going to play with me then. I'm going to come on out here then. <laughs> S 
Some of your neighbors trying to figure out what that mean. That mean you got on something that's too young for you. You in a different season, mother. Evangelist. When seasons change, you got to adjust. But if you don't know the seasons, guess what? You're not going to adjust. So you will not know what to do. And you got to be careful. Every season is supposed to fulfill a specific purpose. But God doesn't measure your life with your chronological order. And quite frankly, personally, God doesn't even care how old you are. Seasons are not attached to simple specific ages. But seasons are attached to the move and the shifts of God in your life. So I've seen this, I've seen this, you know, where I, I may get in a little trouble today because my mother's boy is sitting here, but y'all just pray for me here. But I, I've been in circumstances, as a matter of fact, I was in one this week and I was at a, a, a guest a church ministering and a senior saint came up. She says, baby, I'm 84 years old. I said, amen. God bless you. I've been saved since 1940, whatever she said. I don't know what she said. And I was like, hey, man, you, you, you've seen people in all demographics or every age group that will boast and celebrate of how long they've been saved and or how long they've been in church. And I've been in church since I was 60 for, for 60 years. So you got to be careful. I'm a, I'm a, and I know y'all heard this one. I'm a grown man, dog. <laughs> or you, you've, you've even said it to some of your family members. Don't, don't play with me. I'm grown. Don't play with me. You got to be careful about celebrating your chronological age because it might incriminate you. Not because of the age demographic itself, but what God is concerned about is not how old you are or how long you've lived. The only question God has is, but what did you do? What difference did you make? Whose lives were changed as a result? I, I'm, I'm old. I don't, I, I don't know. My hair's gray. I done lost my hair. What did you do while I was falling out? <laughs> Who did you help along the way? That's the only question. When we stand before God, Jesus says when you stand, there's going to be a judgment speech. At the conclusion of it, God didn't say, I'm going to say, well, well said, thy good and faithful servant. He said, I'm going to say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. In other words, what did you do? do God's question is never going to be how long did you live no he's going to say what did you do with the time that I gave you what purpose what part of your purpose did you fulfill how much time did you really waste how long did it take you to get and 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 understand that you can't know the purpose of a thing until you have a relationship with the creator of the thing how long did you wander aimlessly in the wilderness? How much time did you waste? How many days did you spend on social media and you, and you missed out on the opportunity to commune with me in prayer so I could tell you what I needed your next move to be? How much time did you waste? How many days did you get on the phone and gossip? And how many days did you spend in the beauty in the barbershop talking about everybody else's business when you didn't get your own life and affairs together so I could use you in a magnificent way? How much time did you really waste? How much time did you worry? How much time did you worry about stuff that you couldn't change? No way. Instead of trusting me and following and letting me order your footsteps in the path of righteousness for my name's sake, taking you where you needed to go. How much? How much pain did you go through that you really didn't have no business going through? How many lessons did you learn? How many times did you flunk the class and have to take it all over again? How many relationships were dead beat but you kept on beating the dead? I wish I had a chart. God wants to know. You got to quit feeding dead stuff. I'm about to shout myself. I said I wasn't going to do it. But you got to stop feeding dead things. And start being fed by a living God. Who does not want to see your purpose unfulfilled. That's why he created you. He made you with a specific and a unique divine assignment on your life and he wants you to accomplish it because he knows that there'll be no other joy. No money can steal the joy, can rob you or replace the joy that you get from being fulfilled in your divine purpose. There's no amount of resources, there's no amount of fame and acclaim that can take the place of the peace that I get from just knowing I'm doing what God called me to do. That's why you see people do crazy things because they're walking on faith and not by what they see. 
that just believe in God. I don't know why I'm doing this. I'm walking away from this vocational trade, this career. Now, let me just say this right now. Make sure it's God for you jump. I have to say that because some of y'all be like, well, pastor told me to come in and quit today. My pastor said, I don't need this job. I'm going to tell y'all where y'all can stick it. I'm out of here. No, no, your pastor says you better learn how to discern the seasons. And the only way you know the seasons is that you know the God that co controls all the seasons. Are you with me? Life is not measured by duration. It's measured by your donation. What did you leave? What did you give? It's not how long you lived. Seasons, seasons exist in time. And in order to discern the season, you've got to understand what seasons are. Here it is, real simple. Seasons are natural rhythms or movement in your spiritual journey that flow, that you flow through as you mature and grow in your Christian walk. It's a natural progression. None of us can control the seasons of life. We can't control just as much as we can't control the seasons of the earth. None of us, we can predict it all day long. We can anticipate it. We can look at all kind of almanacs. We can look at all kind of satellites. But at the end of the day, you don't know whether you wake up, it's going to rain, snow, or whether the sun going to be shining. And winds shift, things change, things blow. They blow off the course of your anticipation and expectation. So only God really knows. And same thing is applicable with your life. You don't really know when the seasons are going to shift, but you've got to learn how to discern when they have. Are you with me? Because you can be in time, which all of us exist in time and miss your season. And that's the worst thing in the world because it causes you to live with frustration. And if you don't have a relationship with God and understand that God forgives everything, that he says, I'll cast it in the sea of forgetfulness and remember it no more. You will live in the season of yesterday with regret in the season. You'll live now, rather, with regret from the seasons of yesterday. And you'll beat yourself up trying to figure out why do I feel like this? Why am I experiencing this? Why, why didn't I do it? Why didn't I, why didn't I, no, 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 don't do that. Because you're going to miss the current season trying to worry about the last season. Are y'all with me? And then you're going to have two seasons until you get to a point where you got so many seasons piled up full of regret that you, be, you fall into the hole of depression and then none of your purpose will be fulfilled. When God says, I'll redeem the time, he says, I'm going to accelerate your process and the stuff that you should have done in the last season. I'm going to show you favor in this season. You're going to accomplish double for your trouble just because you finally got back on course and allowed me to do what I've been trying to do in your whole life. Am I helping anybody but myself? Thank you, Holy Ghost. First Chronicles 12 and 32, there was a, a group of men that were part of the new army of David when David took the throne. And the, the Bible said they call them the sons of Iskar, the children of Iskar. And the Bible says that they had an understanding of the times and because they understood the times, it, Israel was a benefactor. They benefited from the fact that they understood the times. They could read the change of seasons. They knew the times that they were in. And because they knew the times that they, they were in, they could tell Israel, you need to do this. You need to do that. You need to go here. You need to go there. And Israel saw great victories and success as a result of them knowing the seasons. If you are not able to discern and determine the time that you are in, you will not know what to do. See, see, right, right through here, I wrote in my notes, they're not going to say amen. Preach to yourself. <laughs> Preach, boy. <laughs> if you don't know the seasons of life that you are in, you will not know what to do. It dictates everything. What you wear, where you go, what you eat, how you dress. Your dreams, your vision, all of that is, 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 is based upon the seasons of life that you find yourself in. Even spiritually speaking, if you don't know the spiritual season that God has you in, you'll, you'll literally do things that, that are out of sync, that are out of order. You will not know what to do and you'll be doing the wrong thing with the wrong people, the wrong time, going in the wrong direction, and you'll end up at the wrong place. Don't look to your left or your right. Seasons come to do a few things. First of all, it comes to change. It's designed to change your mindset, to change your emotional capacity or your understanding so that you then are capable of doing what God needs you to do, not what you feel is good to do in your own 
standard of expectation. But it comes to change you. Every season, the first thing that you have to do is learn how to change your clothes. Your attire has to shift to accommodate the season that you are now functioning in. And so God allows certain things in our lives to come and to happen because he's trying to change your mind. He's trying to transform your thinking and ultimately which changes your behavior. He allows certain things to come into your life. He allows you to go through certain things because he's, he's trying to change you. He knows that if I, if I give you what, it, what is coming to you in the next season, or even if I allow what's supposed to happen to, to help equip you, because God is more concerned about making you better than he is about making you rich. Come on, somebody. He's more concerned about your character than, you know, than your bank account. And so he says, if I bless you with what I'm about to bless you with, or if I allow you to go through the character building season that you're about to come into with this mindset, you're going to die under the weight of this pressure. So I got to change you in this season to get you ready for what I'm about to do in this next season. That's why Paul says, it is good that I've been afflicted. It's good that I went through hell, but I made it. Because had I not known to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, I would have fainted. I had to learn how to trust God on a whole nother level. I had to learn that he was a way maker, that he was a burden bearer, a heavy load sharer. I had to learn that he was, he was bread on my table, food on my table. He was clothes on my, I had to learn that God was my source and my supply, that my job was my resource, but God is my source. He had to change my thinking. Because if I had gone through a recession, if I had dealt with the depression, if I had dealt with the financial and the economic downturn, if I had lost my house in the last season, I would have lost my mind with it. But the fact that I've lost a few things along the way and God has never failed me, that he's always made sure he had my back, that he's always tapped me on the shoulder and reminded me, I got you. What you sweating about in this season? Don't worry about this trouble. We've been through trouble before. You don't remember? You were walking backwards and singing sideways. I spun you around, put you back on straight street and told you, I got this thing. Don't you remember? If he had not changed your mind, and gave you what you were going to come into in the next season, you wouldn't have made it. That's why you got to learn how to thank God for whatever season you're in. Lord, this ain't comfortable, but thank you. Lord, I don't understand what you're doing, but thank you. Lord, I really can't see my way out of this one, but thank you. I don't know how. That's why the scripture says you got to bless the Lord at all times and let his praises continually be in your mouth because what he's trying to see this is a test this is just a test this is a this is just a test of the emergency praise system if this had been the real thing the sky would have rolled back like a scroll the trumpets would have sounded he would have descended from the clouds with a shout the dead in Christ would have been this is just a test of the emergency praise system I'm trying to see if you got what it takes to praise me in this season so I can blow your mind in the next yes God he's trying to see if you got what it takes because if you can't handle this, you can't handle that. You can't deal with this. They're talking about me behind my back. Well, I can't elevate you because not only are they going to be talking about you behind your back, if I take you where I'm going to take you, they're going to be talking about your own CNN. You better chill out and praise me in the middle of it. You better learn how to change your stinking thinking and put your let this mind be in me which is also in Christ Jesus God help me pray help me praise through it help me worship through it change my mind slap somebody high five and say this is good to me I'm so glad that he let me change my thinking I'm so glad, I'm so glad, I'm so glad that he changed my thinking, that he, that he took my mind and spun it around and said, you're thinking too small. You're thinking like a broke person. I can't let you go in here and be a millionaire and you're still thinking like a broke person. You'll be broke again if I don't change your mindset. So the reason I'm showing you how to make little stretch out, I did it with five fish and loaves of bread. I've been doing it all. I, I wish you understood. This is not something new. I'm just trying to show you how we get done. Yeah, you had pork and bean and weenie nights and Raymond noodle moments. But I had to get you ready for Ruth Chris and Mastro's. I had to prepare your heart so you would be able to go eat at the top. I needed you to make sure that you don't ever forget who put it on your table. 
I don't want you to be get beside yourself. I don't want you to get too brand new. Take the price tag off. Don't get brand new on me. <laughs> sit down. Come on, sit down. I ain't preaching today. Sit down. No teaching. And the Lord says, I'm too sharp to preach that hard. <laughs> All my guests, y'all don't understand, but my victory not walkers know I don't dress up like this. I like to be comfortable in case I just feel like running. When I think of his goodness, I won't be able to just lay down in the floor if I want to. I won't worry about nothing. I won't worry about nobody looking at me crazy. I just want to be able to give God what I know he deserves because he changed me. He changed me. See, the disciples were exposed to miracles and opposition and warfare and foreigners and lack and divine supply and God's glory and prayer meetings and countless teachings and hours of, of discussion with Jesus because Jesus was trying to get them ready for the day that he wasn't going to be with them. He said, physically and in the flesh, I'm not going to be here. So I'm going to let you go through all of these experiences because I'm just trying to change your mind to get you ready for the season that you're about to enter into. Season of lack right now, just a dry season. It's all it is, is a dry season. Just because you got a dry season now, God says, I'm just trying to get you ready for your, your, your season of due season. It's, it's going to rain. You smell it? When I was growing up down south, my grandmama used to say, oh, my knees is hurting. It's about to rain. I said, how you know it's going to rain? She said, I smell it. You don't smell the rain? now. I don't smell nothing. But a few minutes later, the little drops start coming down. The... I feel like my grandmama today. I smell rain. Some stuff about to break and some things about to change. Some seasons. I thank you, Holy Ghost. Some seasons about to shift. I smell rain. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God. I see you in your future and you look better than you look right now. Forgive me. I'm just, I caught a glimpse of God's glory over your life and your section is about to be increased. Your, your, your anointing is about to go to another level. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but I decree and declare in the name of Jesus that this is a new season and he's teaching you how to discern the shift. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Sit down. Come on, sit down. Come on, sit down, please. I got too far to go. Sit down. Change is one of the reasons for seasons shifting. The other thing that seasons do is they, they implement course correction. They put you back on, on the right path. See, God will use a season to get you back where you're supposed to be. Yeah, he'll use a season. He'll use a, he'll use a dry spell. He'll use a season to allow you to get back to a place where you learn how to trust him more, where you learn how to be encouraged by him, where you learn how to worship him more. If you hadn't gone through the hell you went through, your prayer life wouldn't be what it is right now. Am I preaching to anybody but myself? Let me tell you, some of my best prayer meetings was by myself. I didn't need no organ. I didn't need no piano. I didn't need nobody else. It was me and God. Lord, I need you now. If you don't show up, not another second, another minute, another hour of another day. But God, I need you to blow my mind right now. I'm hurting. I'm wounded. My, my wife's sick. My daddy's sick. My mama's sick. God, I think the dog is sick. I need you now. If I hadn't gone through certain seasons, I wouldn't know how to pray. I wouldn't know how to have a relationship with God. I wouldn't know how to trust God. Sometimes he'll let things happen to put you back on course because if it happens prematurely, it can die. I'm glad he didn't release me into some things when I wanted to be released into it. Because if I had gone out prematurely, then it would have, it would have fainted. It would have failed, faltered. It would have even probably been fina the finale of the whole concept. But he held me in a waiting pattern. He says, no, chill out. I got you. It's just like Joseph. Joseph was in the prison with the butler and the baker. And the, baker the, 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 the butler was getting out because the butler was getting out of prison. He said, listen, when you get up to the king, man, tell him about me. Tell him about my story. Tell him I didn't do this. I was honorable before God. I was, I was upright and I, I, I was an outstanding man of God. As a matter of fact, when sin was in, 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 in my way, I ran. Tell him about me. Tell him I can interpret dreams. So I can imagine that he was excited because the butler said, I got you, dog. I got you. I got you. He gets to the palace about a month later. He ain't heard nothing. He's like, wait a minute. Now the butler ain't said nothing. <laughs> about five months later, we in the sixth month and the butler still ain't said nothing. Can you imagine the impatience that he must have been feeling, the anxiety that he could have been going through? And then about a year later, well, forget it. I see it's not going to happen. Well, well, maybe. Keep hope alive. Year and six months. Still nothing. All the way to two years. Two years later, 
the butler says, oh, by the way, it, it was a guy in prison. Two years later, there's a guy in jail with me that, yeah, he can interpret dreams. I know you're having these dreams. Two years later. See, if God had allowed him to get out earlier, then he would not have been available and accessible at the time that God's purposes. I want, I want to make sure that my, my uh, self-employment pension plan is together. I, I still got hopes and dreams and some, and some things I want to do. But wait, Lord, but wait, but wait, but hold on, Lord. I'm going to do it. Just give me a minute. God says, you ain't got a minute. You have no time to waste. And because Jonah was rebellious against God, because Jonah refused to accept the purposes of God, because Jonah didn't realize the value of the time that he had, every progression of Jonah's life was a downward spiral from that point forward. He went down to Nineveh. He went down onto the ship at the port. He went down into the belly of the ship. They hit a storm. They picked him up and they put him down over the side of the ship. He went down into the belly of the fish. And the fish went down to the bottom of the ocean. I pray daily, God, don't let me have to hit the bottom before I realize how much I need to be close to you. Don't let it take me losing everything in order for me not to know I need to be close to you, to your purposes, to your will for my life, to your, I, I need your favor. I need, you want to know why I worship God so? It's because I got to be close to him. I realize I can't preach without him. I can't sing without him. I can't minister with, I can't parent without him. I can't drive without him. Do you know how crazy these people are out here? I can't walk the streets without him. I can't go in the grocery store without him. I can't be in the mall without him. I can't dream without him. I can't write a plan without him. I, I can't devise a strategy without him. I need to be close to him. People sometimes get annoyed and look, look at me crazy and say, I don't understand why you, why you worship so because you don't know what being close to him has done. He walks with me. He talks with me. And when I'm, when I'm sad, he's the only one sometimes that can comfort me. When I'm depressed, he's the only one that can speak joy into my dead places. When I'm lonely, he's the only one that says, I don't care who else is with you. I'm with you even until the end of the age. I need him close. You might be cool with a sometime a fake, fickle, phony relationship, but I need a real relationship where when I, I want God so close that when he's talking to me, I feel his breath on my neck. I wish I had a real church up in here. When he encouraged me, I want to feel his hand pushing me in the back. When he lifts me up, I want to know his arms are holding me up. I need to be close. I need to be close. I need to be close because when the seasons, not if, but when the seasons change, I need to know that God is with me. When the seasons change, not if, but when, when, when the seasons change, you're going to need to know God is close to you. When you go through a dry season and you lose jobs, when the economy takes a downturn, when foolishness prevails over the airwaves of media, when you can't depend on the White House and you don't have nothing to fight with in the Black House, when the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy and robs you of the seed and tries to make you live in the poor house, when sickness comes and taps on your family, when you got to stand at the graveside and watch people transition inevitably from this life to the next life. When you got children and grandchildren, you got neighbors, cousins, you got nieces and nephews that are wayward and are lost and don't even realize how lost they are. When you, you got grown children and you can't tell them what to do, but all you can do is put them on the altar and say, God, please keep them because I don't know what else I have in my disposal. When the seasons change. When you've been hit so hard that you don't have enough fight left to even pray for yourself. When you go through moments of depression and isolation and you don't think anybody else understands your pain. When the seasons change. You got to know you got a God who's close. Want to know why I worship him? 
Because when I worship him, he manifests himself in my circumstance. When I ask him, draw me nearer, ain't got nothing to do with y'all. It's got everything to do with life. I need you. I need you. I need you. I need you. And I'm not ashamed to say it. I don't care if I say it on CNN, MSNBC, Fox, ABC, CBS. I need you. Lord knows I done said it many times on BET. I need you. I need you. I need you. I don't care if you're listening. I don't care if it's politically correct. I don't care if you understand. I really don't even care if you agree. I know I need you. I don't care if it causes tears to be yanked down my face until my, sink, my, my cheeks are salty and stained. I, I need you. I don't care if it means I got to roll out of the bed in the midnight hour and just lay on my face before you. God, I need you. I don't care if my friends and family think that I'm all that or think that I think I'm all that. God, I just know I need you. I, I don't care if I look so desperate that I got tears and snot running out of my face. Lord, I know I need you. care if I got bravo macho men that say it don't take all of that you don't understand if you don't learn how to kneel before him you ain't gonna be able to stand before anybody <laughs> problem is us we don't we don't realize how much we need him you don't have time time is filled with swift transition nothing on earth unmoved can stand that's why the songwriter many years ago said build your hopes on things eternal and you got to learn how to hold a God's unchanging hand. God, I need you. 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 I need you, God. I need you. I need you, Lord. I need you. God, I need you. I need you. For my children, I need you. For my marriage, I need you. For my finances, I need you. For my dreams and my hopes, I need you. For my church, I need you. For my family, I need you. For my joy, I need you. For my peace, I need you. I just want to be close to you. The enemy can't stand to be in the presence of a worshiper because he can't stand to be in God's presence. It annoys him that you are able to worship him even though what you're going through is so painful it annoys him that you still honor him even though he's done everything that he can to show you or try to prove to you that God changed the season he don't care about you God's forgotten about you he left you in prison you're still in this same circumstance two years later ten years later he don't care about you that's the enemy's trickery that's his foolery and he wanted you to stop worshiping God because then he knew that God would be close and he whom the sun sets free and the truth of what God really is and what he's really spoken will release you and it will liberate you. It will, it will set you free. And you'll stop wasting time. We come to the conclusion of this journey. You turn around and look over the years of your life. How much time will you have wasted? I mean, I wasted all this time experiencing joy unspeakable, full of his glory. You mean I, I had all these unnecessary days of stress, anxiety, and worry? When I had the God who was able to do all things at my disposal the whole time? You mean I let the doctors give me their final prognosis instead of believing the report of the Lord? How much time are you going to waste? It's not about me today. not even about you it's about him I got so this I don't know how I'm going this this might be a two three month sermon series here I think I got to the introduction just for those of you who this is your prayer I need you now I need you now. I need you now. I need you now. Oh, 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 o
Not another second or another minute, Jesus. Not an hour of another day. Lord, at this moment with our arms outstretched, God, we need you, Lord Jesus, in our homes, oh God. We need you, oh, oh, oh Lord. We need you, we need you, Lord. We need you. I need you, I need you. I need you to make a way as you have all and already already done so many times before thank you Jesus sometimes it was through a window or a barely open door but here's your chance father we stretch we who are not ashamed Jesus we who know that we need you in our lives God the seasons are shifting and we're missing our time Lord Lord, we stretch our hands to thee. Please come and rescue me, because I need you right away. I need the only I need thee Every hour. I need Oh bless Me now My Savior I If you need him, just worship him right here. Come on. If you know you need him and you're not ashamed to say, God, I need you. I need you for my children. This is a crazy world. It's crazy stuff happening. I need you for my children and my children's children. I need you, God. I need you to stand up in my circumstance. God, I need you to put me back on the right street. I need to know I'm in the right place. I need to be able to walk in my true purpose. God, I turn from myself and I turn to you. I turn from the ways of the world and I turn to you. I turn from what everybody else has to say and I turn to you. I turn from my feelings, Lord, and I turn towards my faith. I need you. I need you. I need you, God. I need you. I need you. With tears streaming down my face in this place, God, I need you. With my circumstance turned upside down, God, I need you. With confusion all around me, God, I need you. With haters nipping at my heels, Lord, I need you. With petty people trying to pull me apart, God, I need you. God, with frustration, stress, and anxiety, I need you. With pain and pressure, I need you. With trial and tribulation, God, I need you. In the midnight hour, Lord, I need you. Every waking moment, God, I need you. Lord, I need you. 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 God, I need you. 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 Lord, I need you. Don't worry about them. Get what you need. Get what you need. Come on. He's in the room. Come on. Come on. His manifested glory is here. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. I come to I need 
the old I need every hour oh God I need I need I need I need I need Right now, right here in the sanctuary, God, right where I'm standing, I'm in need of a blessing. Bless me, bless me right now, right now, right now. Hey, I don't want to wait any longer, God. Bless me right now. Change my heart, change my mind, change my life, change my circumstance, change my situation. Oh, right right now right now right now my savior I come I will lift up my eyes to the hills from which cometh my help because all my help comes from the Lord I come Come on, you don't understand. This might be the time, but it's definitely the season. I come to Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your word. Thank you for the wake-up call. Thank you for the wake-up call, Jesus. Thank you for the reminder. Thank you for the push. Thank you for the promise. God, of every man, woman, boy, or girl here under the sound of my voice who's been living outside of season with unfulfilled purpose, I ask that you push them into the full breath of their promise that even now, and magnificent Savior, do what only you can do in their hearts, transform their thinking that it ultimately changes their lives. God, I thank you that you've given us the ability to know that even though the seasons have been shifting, we've been confused, perplexed, bewildered, and some of us even discouraged but that you have not forsaken us nor forgotten us and that it's just a part of your process. And that ultimately your whole goal was to bring us into a proximity with you that we would be so close that you could continue to perform your perfect work inside of us. Thank you. And thank you that when we stretch our hands to you, that God, you reach down and pick us up and hold us like a father would hold their baby. And it's something about God when we're in your arms, we see above our problems. We see above our storms. We see above our situations. We see above the pain. So today, God, hold us. We've declared in this place that we need you. And we know that you are faithful, God, and that you meet us at every point of our needs. So thank you for what you're about to do. I discern a shift in the seasons. You're changing some stuff. But God, while you're changing things, we ask that you don't forget to change us too. Renew our minds. Change our stinking thinking. And even as we embark upon the journey of discovering your word and the truth of your word for the rest of this month and how belong you assign, let your purpose be manifested, revealed, but let your people be changed and transformed eternally. Let us be mindful of what it is to be close to you and let us also be appreciative of what you're about to do as a result of it. Thank you. Ooh, I thank you. <laughs> if ain't nobody else grateful, God, I am. Thank you. And we release a praise in confidence of what we believe you're about to do. In Jesus' name. Come on, let every grateful heart praise God. 
Come on, thank God in advance for a new season. This is a new season. This is a shift. He's about to do something incredible in your life, and I'm excited for you.